Hi, in this video we're going to cover how to make an accordion style page using the Beaver Builder Page Builder plugin on our WordPress website. I've gone ahead and created a sample page here to demonstrate and as you can see our page builder is already installed so we're going to go ahead and we're going to launch that page builder um, right now. So an accordion style page is one that typically shows some questions or some um, sections of information and when you click on the header it expands to show more content. It's a really great way to organize um, a page that has a lot of information or has um, some very important details so that people can find what they need easily and focus on just the information that they're trying to get when they're uh, viewing content on this page. So we're in the layout templates that is available with the plugin and we're going to go ahead for this and click on blank. We just want a plain page to start doing our build out. So this is what you see in the back end and we're going to go right on over here. These are all of the options that are available in the Beaver Builder plugin. Um, but we're going to go ahead and select this advanced modules. We're going to grab the accordion uh, module and come on over here and drop it in. And that's how we get started. So you can see that it brings up this settings box. Um, great thing about this box, it's very easy to move around the page so that you can get it out of your way and be able to see the changes that you're making in real time over here on the page. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add an item. So we're going to label this. We're just going to, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, um, that we're going to kind of do some policies here. So we're going to have a section for um, shipping policies and I'm just typing some content so that you can see it in action. And momentarily, well, here we go, um, that section has now shown up on the page. And then we're going to go ahead and add another one. So maybe we do um, refund policies and add a little content down here. Um, and if you have something that's pretty much set up the way that you want it to be, uh, there's an easy way to uh, duplicate content. So as soon as exchange policies, um, get that content in there. So we've got three in here to play. Um, these buttons over here, if you don't like what you did, you can delete it with the X. If you don't like the order these are in, you can move them around by clicking on the plus sign. Uh, you can move it however you want and it'll adjust on the page here as well. And this middle one is for duplicating. So if you have an item that you like uh, most of the content, maybe you don't need to make many changes to what you've got in there, then you might want to duplicate. Um, or you can just go ahead and add an item here, which is what I usually do. Um, and the next tab over is style. So we have a border color, which you can see here. I don't recommend going too crazy on that, um, but you can get some different options on here. Um, this does become a right, you can move around uh, and find some different options. Um, and you can enter a specific hex code as well, if you know exactly how you want it to look. I don't recommend getting very crazy here. I like the, you know, little bit of color here to set it off from the rest of the page. Um, if you are going to change the color, I would stick to a color you're already using on your website for branding purposes. Um, and then we'll move down here to label size. So right now these are all small. These are the labels, the titles here. Uh, and you can go all the way up to the large size, which is this large. I wouldn't typically recommend going that large unless you don't have a lot on the page and it, and it looks better aesthetically to have um, larger text to kind of fill out the page better, but you, generally speaking I keep them pretty small. You also have some options with spacing and that's the space that's in here in between. Um, here it is with no spacing which is a nice look especially if you have a lot on the page. Um, and here it is with a lot of spacing. Uh, again, I kind of just judge based on how much information I have on the page and what looks the best to me. 
do remember that this spacing is going to be the same whether it's on a desktop computer all the way down to a small flip phone. Um, so the more spacing you put in there, uh, you run the risk of it looking odd on a smaller device because there's this huge amount of space on it. So uh, I would just keep that in mind and uh, don't get too crazy with spacing there. This next option is for um, collapsing the inactive uh, sections here. I always select yes. So what that does is if someone clicks here, it'll open and they can read the rest of the content. And when they're done with that, if they come down here and say click on this one, it will open. They can read that content. As soon as it opens, this one's going to close. So it just kind of keeps the page cleaner and lets them focus on the information that they're wanting to get. Um, so I always select yes here. And then this last one is about expanding the first item. So that would be this one here. And if you wanted that to be open when they get to the page, you would select yes. Otherwise, you'd select no. I generally leave it on no, but if you're worried about people understanding that there's more content available in each of these, um, you might open one of them just so that they are aware. But I kind of feel like the plus sign over here tells them that there's extra content available, and that should, for most people, be enough. Moving over to the advanced tab. I don't tend to make a whole lot of changes in here, but there are a couple of things specifically that I change and I'll kind of highlight what the other options are for. Um, I don't always like how much space is in here and so I might adjust that so it's a little bit um, farther up. I also don't care for how much space is over here in relationship to the edge of co the content, so I frequently will come in and change that. You have some options about whether you want these to display um, on smaller devices. I generally leave it as always. If you look at some other devices and you don't like how it looks, then uh, you may want to make some adjustments here, but that's really some advanced settings, um, as the tab says. Uh, so, you know, if it looks fine on a, a smaller device, I would leave it alone. Visibility, typically you're going to always want it to show. Your options would be if you have a site where you have people logging in to access certain information, then you may want them to see something different here than someone who is not logged in. And um, those are some other settings that are available here. Uh, and I'm going to touch on that real quick. It's not on this page, but one thing that Beaver Builder allows you to do is, so I could create this section here. And I could say, I always want this to show up when someone is logged out. Okay, and then I could create a similar section down here. So when I'm looking at my page, it would look like I have two sets of content that are one right after the other. But then I could set this section to be what shows up if someone is logged in. So the two sections of content will never show up at the same time. One chunk will show up for someone who's logged out and one chunk will show up for someone who is logged in. The same thing applies for this display section. You can create a section that, and say, I want this to charge devices only. And then you could set up a, the same or similar, you know, a similar section down here and say, this is for medium and small devices only. And that might be where, you know, you might have a lot of spacing, for example, in between these because it looks better on a larger computer. And then you might have a section that is, um, has no spacing in between these items because it really displays better on a smaller device that way. Um, and that is, those are a couple of examples of how you would potentially use this display section for a responsive layout and this visibility section for um, what people are seeing depending on whether they're logged in or not, if that applies to your site. Uh, animation, again, I've said it before that this page is typically one that is geared for important information. And so fancy animation is really not beneficial for the structure of this page and people accessing what they need. So I don't style it. You can if you want. There are a few options in here. If you're using one of these options, then um, you can also set the delay, so kind of the speed of how it 
um, processes that style, animation style. Um, but again, I would advise just leaving that alone unless there's a really good reason uh, other than it looks cool to add animation to the page. And CSX, CSS selectors are a little bit more advanced as well. Um, they're to set up some styling um, classes. So we're not going to get too much into that. We're going to focus on how the, the basics of building an accordion style page. So once you have it looking the way that you want, you can go ahead and save it. You might make some other adjustments, like um, I still don't love the amount of space over here. I can tell in this blue that this space showing up here is not part of this blue section. It's part of the gray section. Um, and so that is where I would go in and make some changes to um, the margin spacing if I didn't like how it was lining up. Um, otherwise, if it looks good to go, you come up here uh, I, I think my screen is just a little bit too low. So you come up here and click the done button and then go ahead and publish your changes. And um, as soon as it's done processing, the site will be the live view that somebody else will see when they come to your site. Um, and for some reason it's not working on mine today. I don't know if it's the video piece, but Generally speaking, when you click the plus button, these will open and expand and show added content for your visitor to see. Um, and that's it. So it's not terribly complicated. It really can uh, make for a nice way for someone to get content that they need easily. Um, you may have to make some other adjustments depending on how many items you have here, like adding in some spaces here so that this is... Uh, your footer is attached to the bottom of the page. It looks kind of funny up in the middle of the page right here like it is now. Um, but that's pretty much it. Pretty easy and a really great feature to, to share on a site. Thanks for watching.